Hi, my Tubies. It's me, Sheila True Love. As uh, always, you know, we're going to do Inside the Mind of a Narcissist. This is part two. And this one is discussing the discard. Now, those who are able to escape and discard the perpetrator first do not really escape. You have to understand that. As they tend to be stalked and harassed, even years later, by the <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me, by the um, vindictive uh, narcissist. So when you feel that you've escaped, have you really escaped? Those who are discarded suffer a, a horrific trauma as well. They are pummeled by the narcissist's cruel and callous indifference as they are seemingly rejected and disposed of by someone who they thought really loved them. After having their body, mind, and soul violated, used, destroyed, they are then subjected to the ultimate betrayal. They are left in a way that leaves no closure. The discard is staged in a way that is excessively painful and humiliating for the victim. Perhaps it occurs in public <coughs> or happens shortly after the narcissist has gallivanted off with their new victim, which I have one of my dear, dear friends who uh, called me today and she was like totally distraught. She was crying her eyes out. She's so hurt. She was with her narc for 16 years and in just a matter of three weeks, he moved on to someone else and she's really hurt by that, you know. I didn't know that she still had feelings for this character because as for me, my narc can move on the next day and I wouldn't give a rat's rear end. But obviously she still has feelings for her ex-narc. I mean, after 16 years, that's a long time. And it's understandable. You know? Um, maybe, I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking about that, how hurt she is feeling right now. And I, I wish I, the only thing I can do at this point is be a good listener. And if she asks for my advice, if she asks, and of course I will more than be, be more than happy, you know? Well, the way these narcissists do things, it's they do things mercilessly and calculated. And it's only done to try to destroy you. Victims of narcissistic abuse are often brought to their knees and left blindsided by the narcissistic departure. They're depleted, drained, belittled, and weakened. They are left with more questions than answers, more doubt than certainty, I, that's the part I don't understand. Why do you have so many questions? Why, because your questions are pretty much saying, why did he do this to me? How could he do this or her? Do this to me. How? The question is, that's already answered. That's what narcissists do. So that's a mental disorder. It's a mental disorder. So, I mean, wh wh where are you left with um, unanswered questions? You know? Uh, maybe it's because you was blindsided. You didn't see it coming, you know, at the same time. I know that they, they drain you. They weaken you. Uh, you're left probably, like they said, with more questions than answers. And a lot of times, people who have been discarded, they fall into depression. They have all of this anxiety and suffer the symptoms of trauma. And in some extreme cases... Some even committed suicide or they get close to the face of death. If they are not familiar with or well-versed about the cycle of abuse, they have a tendency to blame themselves for being abused, not realizing that this malignant predator has just sucked them dry. If the victim does survive the discard, the only path left is the long road to healing. Unless they become entangled in the narcissistic game, once more, they get sucked back into the drama vortex of the relationship because that's what it is, a vortex. You know, something that just pulls you in. You know what a vortex is. It pulls you right in. So, <clears throat> if they get involved in this relationship yet again, the cycle just begins again. So, my advice is once you got rid of the narc, please... Leave them alone. Leave them alone. And, and if you, you please, that's my advice. Now, if you feel that you can't seem to leave them alone, be very careful. 
And the first sign that they show where they are trying to devalue you, that first sign, that's when you start to discard them. ASAP. Because it's not as hurtful when you're the one who discard them. It's not as hurtful. <sighs> anyway, my darlings, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry you're hurting. I really am. This is Sheila True Love. You always have a choice. Please choose wisely. I think the right choice in this case is definitely, uh, please, don't, once you, it's not good to go backwards in life. You're supposed to go forward. Going backwards, not, I, I wouldn't recommend it. At the same time, you're all adults. You make your own decisions. Sheila True Love, until next time, goodbye for now. I'm still going. Oh.